Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do an oil painting and it's an interesting uh, method we're going to use today. It's a, it's a painting of a foggy barn in Tennessee. It's really the same uh, reference material I used in my uh, watercolor painting last month, but I'm going to do it in oils this time. Um, I'm going to use a limited palette and I'm also going to do it on paper. I don't know if you've ever tried that or know about oil paper, but <clears throat> there is a, a product made by Arches um, that I'm going to experiment with. I've done a little experimenting, you can see here over my shoulder, um, and I'll talk, to, talk about that in just a second. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to be painting on 11 by 15 Arches oil paper, and uh, I want to go back over to the computer and show you the photographs I used and how I got to the, the sketch. So hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm at my computer now, so let's take a look at the original photograph that I started with. Um, if you follow my watercolors, you saw this last month, um, <clears throat> but uh, this was a big wide scene in uh, the Smoky Mountains area of, of, of Tennessee, and uh, we were there on vacation, and we took this photo really early in the morning. We were going to breakfast at a restaurant right across the street. but. Uh, had too much driveway and street in in the foreground for me, so I didn't like that. Um, and it had a nice little barn that was sitting out there in the fog that I wanted to focus in on. So I basically took this photo and cropped it down, cut it up, and put it together with Photoshop into a new composition with the street gone, the zoom in on the uh, little foggy barn, kept the sunrise up there over the mountains, and kept trying to keep the fog in the, in the middle distance and background. So. That's the photograph we're working from. Um, I have it in a grid format as well, which fits my 11 by 14 paper, but I'm painting on 11 by 15 uh, oil paper today, so there's about an inch left over on each side, or half an inch, I should say. Uh, it's not, not that big of a deal, uh, so the sketch felt fit pretty well. Um, here's the uh, value map, which I do on all of my paintings. Um, I did that last month, and then here is the sketch, which is available for you to uh, look at and download and use it as your template for this painting. So that's all I want to tell you about that. Um, I'm going to go back over to the easel now, and I'm going to go over the brushes and paints, and then I'll talk a little bit about my little testing with this oil paper. And so here we have our palette, and I went through the brushes. I have my um, Filberts from uh, Trakal.com. I showed those uh, there, and uh, I won't maybe I won't use all of those. Um, I have a, a series of flats which I've used before from Trakal, uh, 16 down to size 8. And I have my uh, Bob Ross brushes that I have a uh, I have a uh, the, the blender here, the one inch blender. I have the fan brush, and I have the script liner, and I also have my trusty uh, palette knife. So uh, I may not use all of those. I don't know what I'm going to use right now. Let me go over the paints again for you so that I have a good uh, copy of this on the final editing when I make the video. I'll cut out some of that stuff in the beginning. Uh, but uh, go over the palette here. Uh, titanium white, midnight black, sap green, and yellow ochre. And I mentioned Anders Zorn, who has a, a palette called the Zorn Palette, very famous. Um, he used four colors in his palette for almost all his paintings. Um, he used uh, titanium white, black. He used a crimson red color, reddish color, and uh, yellow ochre. So I've sort of replaced the uh, red with sap green. And, uh, and so it's um, going to help me do this uh, painting with the colors that are in the photograph, if you saw the photograph. Um, there is some green in the foreground, some ochre colors in there, so I'll try to get that uh, replicated as closely as I can. Okay, um, and I also have my uh, paper plate here with uh, uh, Bob Ross Liquid White, which I'll probably use some of that today because I'm going to try to get these nice foggy effects. And I have uh, some Winsor Newton Liquid here that I uh, that helps uh, speed up the drying or slow down the drying time if I want to. So. Uh, uh, with that said, I'm going to go back now to my easel. So here we have my oil paper. It's 11 by 15. <clears throat> it's one quarter sheet. Arches sells this in a 30 inch by 22 inch uh, 
size which is the same as watercolor and so you can cut it into fourths and you can get four 11 by 15 paintings out of it on oil paper. So the, what's unique about this paper, what they tell me, and I've kind of tested it a little bit here, but uh, it it's a, has a, an oil barrier that absorbs water solvents and binders evenly while allowing the paint and pigment to remain, remain on the surface is what they say. Has an exceptionally tough surface. It withstands brushing with stiff bristles. Um, as well as handling paint removal with turpentine or a rag. It stands up well to palette knives. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in my test here. Uh, it says the paper is ready to use without preparation. You don't have to put anything on it. I did put some gray gesso on down here and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. If you want to paint on paper, you can paint oils on any kind of paper, I guess, cardboard, any kind of paper, on the, anything as long as you prep it with a, a gesso of some sort. And uh, But this is a build that it needs no uh, no preparation at all and uh, because it's paper and it's size you can really cut it and you can roll it you can, easy to transport so anyway it's uh, lightweight it's not very expensive a 32 by a 30 by 22 sheet is about six dollars on my dick blick website so uh, you can get four paintings out of that for uh, six dollars and you can't buy four 11 by 15 11 by 14 canvases for six dollars um, so, okay, back to the paper now. Here's, uh, here's what I did. Um, I thought that maybe I could use this with watercolors as well, since I do both watercolor and oil. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I tried on this side of the paper to use just watercolor uh, paint, paint and uh, put some water on it. On the left side is all oil, so I'll explain to you what I did in this little test. Um, I soaked the entire paper down on the right side with clear water. Um, it seemed to absorb the water very well, um, uh, but it did buckle uh, because it's a 140 pound paper. Didn't surprise me, but I put, I put a graded wash. I just started moving my brush down and coming down with the uh, light blue and getting lighter and lighter, and it took the paint very well. It left a nice, nice uh, surface there. I was able to come back and put in some other brush, uh, brush strokes. I have some very dry brush strokes here that uh, it may be hard for you to see. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, maybe show you a little more of this. Whoops, wrong side. There we go. Um, you can see that I was able to get some nice dry brush effect here with my watercolor brush on this paper uh, with enough paint. You also see I could get some very soft effects with it because it, it blends nicely uh, in this uh, scenario. I had also put up here where you see this uh, area that looks a little bit like a cross up here. Uh, I had put in some masking fluid to see how it would react to masking fluid. Um, I put the masking fluid on and then I used this uh, rubber uh, um, remover that, that takes the masking fluid off after it dries. And the interesting thing I learned here is, is that the when I took the masking fluid off, it not only took the masking fluid off, it took the paint off all around it, plus it just damaged the paper. So I have paper damage here uh, from using this rubberized remover. So maybe if I would have just used my finger to remove that masking fluid, I wouldn't have damaged the paper. I tried to get some blossoms. I threw some paint water on here after it was trying to dry. It was still wet. It seemed to blossom okay. Um, but this paint really is on the surface. Um, the water must seek uh, seep through and uh, into the into the substrate, but you can actually remove this. You can remove this watercolor paper, a watercolor paint, with just an eraser, and it kind of does come off very easily. So it tells me that paint is setting on the surface of this paper. Um, it's not soaked into the paper like it would be <clears throat> in traditional watercolor paper. So that's enough on the watercolor uh, scenario. Here's the oil scenario. I. Uh, I started at the top and I did some dry brush effects. It works very nicely for that. <clears throat> I put on some liquid white here under this section. I also put some liquid white on here where I had I'd painted uh, gray gesso and let that dry because that's typically how I use my, um, my uh, canvases when I paint on them. I have uh, dry gesso, or gray gesso there and I put my sketch over it. So what happened. So I ended up getting with some nice dry brush effects here as well. I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see, see there, I used my palette knife up, up above here with the uh, liquid white. I got some nice blending with the liquid white. Um, this is almost all dry now. This has only been like 24 hours. 
Uh, and liquid white takes a while to dry, so some of that liquid white's still wet. But I got some nice uh, hard edges, uh, rough edges, soft edges here. Um, I only used the one color, but I also used some heavy paint here. I got some uh, a little more paint in my brush and put some heavy paint on. I also got my palette knife out. I used the, the Bob Ross palette knife and put on some strokes that left uh, the paint in a impasto type uh, mode and it took it very well. It, it uh, ha handled it very well. Over here I actually scraped off some of the, the brown. I used the palette knife to scrape it off. I used uh, my paper towel and uh, then I actually put some turpentine or some uh, thinner in my paper towel and scrubbed it. I never did get it back to white. Over here with watercolor I can get it back to white, but I really can't get it back to white here in the oil uh, scenario of the oil paper with using oil paints. Here I put in some, just used some thinner with my paint and I got some very nice soft uh, effects over here um, that start to mimic watercolor a little bit in there. In the, in the way they look, in their texture, which is hard to do in, in oil, oil uh, typically. Um, down below on the, here on the uh, part that I had gray gesso, it really didn't seem to make any difference. Um, they say the gray gesso or any kind of gesso uh, that you put on will maybe make the paint br more brittle and harder to work with. It may not have the longevity, they don't know yet. Um, but I used liquid white here and I got some nice effects. So it seems to be working pretty well as advertised. Um, the only thing that I was surprised about, which I shouldn't have been surprised about, I guess, is but uh, I try to use it for watercolor and uh, I, it, they, you know, it says it holds water, it stands up to water. So uh, I tried it. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's my test and that's my uh, unscientific uh, demonstration for you uh, rather than do all those strokes for you here live. I decided to do it ahead of time and, and just talk about it because it took me about 15 minutes to go through that. But so it, it you do see it. So but it's very flimsy. It's bendable. Uh, you can cut it. You can uh, cut it to different sizes. And uh, it's possible I could use it for watercolor. I may try it again. It's only 140 pound paper, which I don't prefer. I prefer the 300 pound uh, paper. Um, so it doesn't have quite the texture and tooth on the the surface that I like to work with. But uh, anyway, that's that. So I'll leave that for now and we'll go back to our planned painting here. So Ellis, welcome from Fairfield County, Ohio. Glad you're here. Um, so now we got our uh, painting here. We're going to take off on this and try to do the same uh, painting that we did last month, but do it in oil, do it with a limited palette and do it on oil paper, Arches oil paper. So let me get my camera aligned here as best I can and get it moved over to the side slightly so I have more of the paper and less of me. And then let me put my palette in here like that. Okay, so now you can see my palette, you can see my brushes, um, you can see the uh, um, sketch on there it's it's fairly light um, but I'm going to take just a little bit of it out because it's still a little bit too dark it's not going to be as big a problem in uh, oil as it is in watercolor because most of this is going to get covered up but um, I want to start with a little bit of my liquid white and I'm going to put uh, some of that on here uh, in the in the uh, where the sky where the sun is up here so I got white on white here, so you're going to have trouble seeing it, I'm sure. Uh, but as I put other colors in, it'll start showing up. Um, but I just wanted to get this laid in. I want this to be nice and blended. Uh, I have some areas in here that had some soft areas that I want to um, bring the, uh, let's see here, where am I? There's that. Okay, yeah, I got another layer up here. Okay, so there's a layer of mountains up here. There's another layer down below. These ones up above have more fogginess. So I'll try to take advantage of this liquid white and uh, bring out some of that fogginess. <laughs> when I look back at my monitor to see what you see, I can tell that you can't see anything because you, it, I'm just, trust me, I'm putting white paint on here. Liquid white. Every once in a while you can see a of it, but uh, I'll leave it at that. So, okay, there's my liquid white painting. Now we're going to start with 
a little bit of the uh, midnight black since that's the only color I've got this is going to be a lot of gray shades of gray darker gray lighter gray um, and uh, just a little bit of this ochre in it in some spots um, so let's start over here and see what we got going a little bit of this I want to get a little more movement in the paint so I'm going to pick up a little bit of my liquid it's all sort of rough brush now see this in the case of uh, case of this it's not going to uh, lighten up much when it dries like watercolor does so I've got to try to get it thinned down to the point where uh, it's got the, the values I want this is a little too dark um, but I can always come back and put some more white in it to lighten it up um, but this is sort of the light sky that uh, we saw in this It um, doesn't seem, this is my first time actually trying to paint something uh, on this paper. It does suck up a lot of paint, it seems like to me, but maybe that's good. Um, so I want to mix it up a little bit, get a few more values in here. Um, just bring it down. I'm using a, a mixture of liquid white, a uh, little bit of my liquid, and a little bit of this uh, midnight black. We need a bigger brush. That's what I always tell myself once I get done. I should have used a bigger brush. Uh, over here, we have a lot of just kind of white, off-white over here. It reacts differently than canvas for some reason. I'm not sure if I can put my finger on exactly what it is. Uh, but uh, it, it looks like it's having a harder time taking the paint. It may be because of the fact that the, the oils are being resisted and the paint is staying on the surface, so it's trying to leave the paint on the surface for us. Um, but that's the way it works, so I'm just uh, getting a lot of dry brush out of this. This might have been a good candidate to, to cover it all with uh, liquid white, maybe, I don't know. Um, it would have certainly spread much easier. But we got time, I don't have to get this done by any certain time as long as you guys stay with me here we'll be we'll be fine all right let's come down here and get a little more down in this area I've got some mountains that go across here that I want to highlight yeah All right, so I'm trying to get that hazy looking sky that you see in a morning sunset, sunrise when the sun's trying to peek through the clouds and, and it uh, can't quite get through there. It has this sort of aura around it that uh, you have to look at. So hopefully that's starting to look like that. Um, I want to start with this row of mountains. <clears throat> the first row of mountains back there are all pretty hard edge um, so let me see if I can get a, a good dark value here with my midnight black and we're going to start right in here about right here and we're going to put in this row of mountains here and they run all the way across 
paper. And they do have a kind of a hard edge on them. They, they can have a little bit of a softer edge in some spots, but for the most part, <clears throat> they really sort of stood out in this uh, photograph. Darker. Okay, these look like they could be really heavy, far off mountains like you'd see in out west, but uh, they're not. Put a few marks in here to indicate there's some trees and some things growing on them. Uh, good comment, Lindy. Tried the other side for the watercolor. Yeah, I might try to do that. See if that uh, how that works out. Um, all right, now I want to lighten this up on the bottom. I'm going to start getting some more. Uh, I want to get this fogginess going on in here. Except I need more white. So I'm working to get this um, foggy fogginess that's blended into the bottom of these mountains where the fog is just getting burnt off by the sun slightly. And uh, I want it to, you could be able to see that. Mixtures of white and primarily white and a little bit of this a liquid to thin it down so that it flows on very easily without leaving a lot of uh, brush marks or paper marks. Uh, this this paper doesn't have the uh, the look of canvas when you, you get a rough edge with it, but it uh, it looks different than, than canvas usually. Um, so. And I see a, a layer of fog going across here that looks like it might be right this time in the morning. Um, I can always lighten it up by putting in some more white. Um, it's not bright enough in some areas. I can always put a few more spots like where the sun's actually hitting it over here. It might be a little brighter. Um, some of these areas right here and sort of blend it out away from the sun. If there's any kind of marks at all, it would be sort of coming away from that sun. All right. Um, so that is that layer. Next layer is a bunch of uh, trees back in there. I'm going to get my uh, a little filbert that gives me some nice, very nice um, treetops back there. See if I can get a get another value of my black that's sort of between what I've got there and what I've uh, and not and not overly it needs to be just a little darker. This is a very good exercise for working on. Uh, values because this is all different shade, different values of this color and uh, so I want to just let you see some trees back in here sort of floating around in the fog.
like that. Then there's another layer that starts getting just slightly darker as we're coming forward. Should get a little darker as we come forward. So this may take me a long time at this rate with this. Too dark, too dark, too dark. Getting a range of values here that um, I'm trying to leave, make sure I know where this light pole goes. There's a light pole here that I'm going to remember to put in, hopefully, if I don't forget. This midnight black really can take over sometimes, it uh, gets very, very dark. But to just make the differences in the values here helps give us the uh, illusion that we've got depth and rows and rows of trees back here. Uh, and uh, I'm getting tired of using that little brush. I'm going to go back and get my big, my big old filbert here. Maybe I can make a little better time with this. I'm going to bore you to death here watching me. So this is a great exercise if you want to try to uh, work on values, changing values, controlling values. Um, down here and just uh, swoop around this barn. grass areas. I'll leave a little bit of that white in there to sort of make it look like we got it sort of fading in and out. This all has to be covered over. Yeah, I think I should have just put liquid white over the whole thing here and just uh, come back and these all these trees are going to get painted over a little darker. They actually start getting a little bit of green in those trees that are here, so I'll leave that. So you can see the barn outline of the barn and. Uh, we're here, let's get this down to the down to the horizon level there. Just little touches of this midnight black just change that all the a lot. Okay, so there I've kind of got it down where I want it now with this big brush. 
And uh, this area over here I didn't totally fill in because it's really uh, got some room for this light pole that's sticking up. I want to put it in and make sure that I have room for it. Okay, so now that all in the background is, <clears throat> is various uh, trees again. So I'm going to just come back now with just a lighter, a little bit darker rather. Um, value and put in some marks that start telling telling you that this is more trees back here behind this barn they're all fogged over a lot of fog Okay, so getting that done, I want to come over here and put a little more, just a few more slightly darker images sitting back here in the fog. Put in some, stamp some things in here with my brush and just and come back and sort of blend them in. If you ever remember watching Bob Ross, he used to use this, he would use this big old blender and he would come in here and he'd pound on it to try to get the uh, liquid white to come through so you could see the, the soft foggy nature of, of some of his uh, scenes that were had this kind of thing going on but since I didn't put liquid white under everything it probably wouldn't work very well but I'm just trying to get a nice uh, layer another layer of trees back here that uh, tell you what's going on and uh, I've got even some more that are going to come on the front here when I get done with this I'm going to uh, be changing color slightly but I want to go back to this barn now since I got the barn right here I'm ready to paint it um, it is really much darker it's probably it's at least as dark as those mountains behind it and should be a little darker to bring it forward so let's see what happens. I've got my flat brush here. And I'm just going to put in this barn shape. Could use my palette knife, but I'm going to uh, just put it in this way. And uh, I have to sort of distinguish for you the front from the side. Dave from Oxford, well, UK, welcome. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a lighter color in the top of this barn. So I think I'm just going to use the color of the paper. Um, maybe start touching in a little bit of this green see what that does here as I come down the side can't really see it that well right now um, but change the color of this front of the barn just slightly so it's not the exact same color as the roof and uh, add some more white to uh, Change the value. All right. So I'm putting a little texture in there, a little bit of color change, a little bit of value change, so that it doesn't look uh, just like one solid wall, which is really what that barn looks like. Um, but um, I'm going to just uh, put another little color, bring up a little bit of my, if I take my uh, yellow ochre and add a little bit of 
black to it. We'll see what happens on this front side. This is a, I want it to be a different color. It's pretty much the same color as part of that side, which I guess it should be because it was all probably painted together at the same time. But let's just put in this roof line. Okay. So let's start moving in a little bit of the ground color here. Some of this ochre. We'll start putting a little bit of that in. Changes it up just a little. So I'm leaving spots in there that help it uh, look like there's some texture, some something going on in that barn besides just uh, flat painted walls. Um, make sure I have a little eave overhang over here and maybe one over here to make sure tell you the story that that is a barn. I've got a tight edge there. All right, <clears throat> so there's my barn setting in the fog and I gotta put in now some trees, got some more bushes over here that I want to put in that start having some more of this green in them, ochre and sap green. I haven't washed out any of my brushes folks, I haven't used uh, thinner to clean out anything so far. Putting a little midnight black, <clears throat> trying to get a greenish color that for the, the trees and some of the bushes that are in this area. Um, I'm going to see how this works now over the top. I'm going to come in and it's almost too dark, isn't it? Get some uh, more white in there, lighten it up. It's always good to do a test brush stroke like that to see if uh, how your values are and see what your uh, how much paint's in your brush. So I want this to kind of continue to be foggy as well. So I want to uh, make sure I have enough of this, have it light enough and some white in there to make it sort of blend in with the fog. Notice how I'm painting this. I'm just painting by pushing up. Um, Okay, everybody's still with me? Good. Again, if you have any questions, folks, please uh, put them in the window. I keep checking my chat window there to see if uh, anybody's got anything to say. A few more over here. I'm going to widen this out a little bit. This wasn't really in the photograph, but I've got a little bit wider uh, section here I want to include, so I'm just going to throw some uh, paint over there. Um, and we do have this uh, area where we could probably try to scrape in. I don't know if this is going to work on paper, but looks like it works pretty well. Uh, just to throw in some trunks in there. I don't know if you can see that that well, but it looks like to me it's working pretty well. Um, so far I haven't used paper towel, I haven't used my thinner at all, I've just used four brushes and a little bit of my palette knife here with this thing. Um, so I, by uh, putting these little bit of darker colors here, if you put anything that's darker at all, you kind of want to put it toward the bottom, which helps uh, tell the story that there is a, a bottom to these. Um, so you don't have to go crazy with it. But don't make a straight edge along there. Try to uh, try to pick it up and give it uh, some other 
modifications along there. So it's not just a straight line. Okay, now, while I'm there, I'm going to see if I can come back and get my script liner and put in a few of these. There's a, another tree that's just kind of hanging out there. Um, I don't have the right color for it, of course, because I'm using a limited palette, but I'm going to use this darker color here. There's a uh, big... I'm get some more of this in there. Get some uh, it's not coming off very well. I wonder if my thinner would help. You're getting to see me experiment with this for the first time, folks. This is uh, really my trial and error here. Oh boy, it's not coming off very well. I don't know if it's because of the way the paint works on this paper that it's got more Yeah, it doesn't have to be identical to the photograph, but certainly uh, it would be nice to have uh, a few more things in here that look like they're growing out of the ground. All right, let me stop on that. All right, um, now what we got left really is the foreground um, and maybe some touch-up. Well, I, well, I've got this... Uh, little brush here. Maybe I want to try a... I guess I'll try this um, script liner. I'm going to get me some darker paint and try to put in this uh, pole here, this uh, light pole. You can see that or not, but... Uh, Took some very, very wet paint, a lot of thinner in it, with some of my black with a little bit of that green, and just plopped that pole in there like that. Put him down just a little bit below the ground level there. Can tie him in with the others. So that, along with, um, has a little, I put a little box on the side of it up here. Um, do that. I want to do this before I paint this down here so I got a place to rest my hand. So that's the only reason I'm doing this right now. There's a, a line. There's another line taken off over this way. And I actually have one that goes all the way across the whole width of the paper. Just if I can. Uh, that doesn't look very good. I've got too too fat on me right there. How do you fix it? Well, guess what? I've got plenty of paint in my brush here. Let's make some trees out of it. Hard to see it now. Just abstract it in there. Okay. A few more things with this tree over here on the right. All right. Okay. So let's stop on that for now. Jose, hello. Welcome. Carlotta from Ohio, welcome. All right, so let's, we've got all this uh, 
brush and stuff down here in the foreground. A lot of it uh, has some ochre in it. And uh, so I'm going to just start picking up my uh, some liquid white again. Pick up some ochre. Get a mixture here on my palette that's got those colors in it. The ochre, white, some sap green. And uh, then to get it darker, I'll pull in a little black. So if you can see what I'm doing on the palette here, I'm getting myself a, a messy. So I'm using the fan brush now. Different colors, change it up, make it green in some areas. And over here we got some more. Tie it together, tie it into what's above it, so that we have uh, plenty of um, change in texture and color and value. This fan brush helps you make some very nice uh, grasses that sort of stick up. I don't know if you've tried that lately, but this fan brush is wonderful for that kind of thing. Ochre, white, sap green. Put another a lighter section in here. If I put a lighter section in front of a darker section, it will make that darker section stand out and vice versa. So I'm just building all this grassiness right out toward the road here. We're uh, kind of standing in the road to paint this. And uh, get me some more darker as we come forward. I want to make it just a little darker as we get down in here. Um, and uh, foreground should be darker. But as I'm, I'm getting some uh, interesting texture with this paper underneath. Um, I suppose I would get that maybe with the canvas as well, I don't know, but uh, certainly getting, uh, put in some of this down here and get it in fast. All the way over here, let's make it like that. All right, come back and get some uh, lighter colors and put in across here. I've got some foreground bushes I can put in as well, so I'll be popping those in in a minute here. So it's just a grassy field that's kind of left over from previous uh, seasons. Don't even think it was cut very much as far as I can tell. Wasn't wasn't trimmed, that's for sure. Alright, so so you're seeing a nice mottled looking foreground here. I don't want it to be one color. Try to avoid one solid color. Pick up some darks and put in a we put in a few things that sort of go in angles like this will make it look like the ground is uh, uneven and maybe uh, has a little bit of a roll to it, whatever. 
we come back and put in some more of this uh, white, lighter color, we'll start making it look a little foggy, even. As the fog does lay down in some of these areas. And then come back over that with a little bit of darker color and make it stand out. So I could spend a probably a good bit of time messing with these weeds and brushes and things, but um, I think I don't want to spend a lot more time on I'm going to put a few more of these uh, bushes in the foreground here, or I guess it's a, a bush. Uh, so just try not to leave too many open spaces with just one color in it. Put something else in there to kind of fill it out. Make a little abstract shape out of it. Don't leave a uh, don't leave a section of grass that's um, all like looks like a geometric shape. There was some uh, other trees up in here. This area. Come back and get my other brush and put a few things in here. Like this. So I'm just kind of putting some finishing details on here now to help uh, complete the story uh, of a field that's kind of waking up to the morning sun and uh, still got a lot of fog laying around. So let's put a little more fog in here. What do you say? Like some of this area here. Um, that's almost too white, so let's thin it down. Where's my fan brush? I can do it better with my fan brush, I think. Yeah. And there were some actually white flowers and stuff in there. Um, but I'm going to uh, just sort of see if I can put in a few things that look like they're uh, maybe a tree or a bush or something here. So I'll leave you a little view view spot to kind of get your eye going to go back in here it's sort of by design all right I don't want to do too much more I'm going to make it worse probably so stop fiddling somebody needs to tell me to stop put it in the chat window and say stop And then I'll keep doing some more probably. Um, there were a few little uh, white flower type things here that I want to see if I can pop some of those in just in some spots. There are some are getting hit here by something like this in some areas. Um, I don't know what they were, but I don't care what they were. Um, put a few few more of these uh, things that look like they're weeds that are in the shadow. Okay. Uh, we're making very good time today, folks. This has been just about an hour from start to finish. Step back and take a look at that for a minute. Make sure <clears throat> Not something else I should do. Um, I don't like this shape I've left here. Um, so I'm going to make a little more abstract out of it. Something like that. Just trying to give your eye a chance to get through there. And uh, stop with that. Um, get a little bit darker paint here. Put on our 
signature. Come on, give me some dark paint. All right. Um, I think I'm going to say uh, there was just one other thing I wanted to try with this sun up here. I don't know. I'll probably make it worse. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it alone. I think it just looks okay. I get up there and mess around with that sun trying to make a some sort of a rose thing about putting some rays or something like that. But I think I'm going to uh, just leave it at that and uh, not try to mess with it anymore. So I'm going to zoom back and say I, uh, I hope you like this little experiment on oil paper. It's the first time I've tried it um, to do a painting with it. And I think it works pretty well. It's got a little bit different feel when you put the brushes on it. And the paint uh, handles just slightly differently. Um, but it seems to do a good job with in terms of standing up to it. I didn't use a, anything to scrape paint off with or anything like that. But it uh, seems to work as advertised. And I think I got a decent little painting out of it. And uh, it's a very, very low cost uh, uh, substrate to use for your, for your oil paintings. And it's really good for sketching if you want to go on a vacation and you want to take your oils, but you don't want to take canvases. Buy yourself a pad of paper. These, they sell these with 9 by 9 by, uh, 9 by 12 sheets, padded paper, and uh, you could get a lot of paintings out of that on an on a excursion. And I think they dry a little faster on the paper here. I'll see how this dr dries. Um, it seemed to dry last night. That little experiment I did with some of those brush strokes um, seemed to dry pretty fast. So uh, anyway, hope you like that. Hope you give it a try. And thank you for joining me today. And uh, check out my website. All the, the sketch and the uh, original photo and the value map are out there on my website. You can download those <clears throat> for free and uh, use those for your convenience. Um, check out my Facebook page. And uh, let me know if you give this painting a try. I'd like to know how you did on it, what you think of this oil paper. I may try this again because uh, it is really uh, Pretty nice. I use the same backing board that I use for watercolor, so I just tape on the paper, oil paper, instead of the uh, watercolor paper, and it works. Um, I just have to keep track of the paper, oil paper versus watercolor paper, and they're, they're, they look so very similar. It's uh, almost easy to make a mistake. So until um, I see you again, I'll say so long for now. It's Larry Hamilton saying bye-bye.